One of your bands, your drummer's girlfriend was the one that actually ended up introducing you guys to Kyle Gass, right? Was, was it this band? That was it. Mm -hmm. okay. That was it. So how yeah. did she meet him? How did she meet Kyle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so she's, she likes like, um, I don't know, it's hard to say. She knows, she just meets a lot of people. Like she goes to shows. She's one of those people that really wants to meet the artists and stuff. And so she kind of becomes friends with a lot of these people just by being a cool, you know, she's a great hang. She's super funny. Uh, and so her and Kyle kind of hit it off, uh, as you know, friends and kept in touch. Uh, and so, yeah, I think, I can't remember exactly how it happened. But I know that she was sort of waiting around maybe after a show to say hi or something like that. And it's kind of started from there. And then how long did she know him before you guys ended up getting introduced? That's a good good question. I mean, that might have even been like a year or two. And was that he, he was just coming through Ohio and then she's like, I know this guy is coming to Ohio. You guys should talk to him. When that happened, it, Kyle was starting train wreck with JR mm -hmm. here in California. And he, Kyle had this idea that maybe they would go, him and JR would go to a place and like hire local guys to be the band. And it was kind of this old school sort of paradigm where, you know, guys used to do that. And it's like, you know, watch me for the changes kind of thing or whatever. But it ended up being that he wanted to go to Ohio and kind of tour around Midwest a little bit and asked Aaron if she knew anybody. And it was us. She was like, yeah. And so was there so then, even, was there like any type of audition process or is just, you guys play the instruments I need. You're good. You're in the band now. That, yes. And I originally was not playing guitar. I was just going to be teching. And Spiker was not playing bass. He was just going to be helping out. So how did that morph into actually so, joining? Yeah. So when they came in and they did a rehearsal in this dude's, this friend of Aaron's basement, the drummer was... John and I's drummer. The bass player was John and I's bass player. And then I started kind of like, we were there, Spike and I were there. And I was like playing this like chord melody guitar thing. And Kyle always lo loved that kind of stuff, like Ted Green chord melody. So we started talking about that stuff. And then he's just like, you want to play guitar? And I was like, yeah. And it was just, that's how that started. And then I was in train wreck. Uh, and then Spiker was doing like backup vocal stuff, like just, he was just kind of, yeah, they're hanging out and doing that kind of stuff. And uh, I can't remember exactly when the switch happened, but it wasn't very long before he was playing bass, basically. So I think that, yeah. Did you come up with the, the character of J.B. Shredman? No, uh, that was, uh, that was probably J.R. Okay. Um, I think J.R., yeah, it was, it was J.R. and Kyle. They kind of came up with all of the the characters and names at that point. So this is around what, like 2002, 2003? Yeah, it'd be probably 02, because then John and I moved in 03. And that's, what, that's when you moved to LA? Yeah. Okay, so what was that, what was the catalyst that made you say, after, you know, you toured a train wreck in Ohio, we're going to LA now, we gotta, you know, really start taking this seriously? Yeah, basically, that was a big part of it, but we had already had that plan. John and I wanted to, like we were, we were total, like, I mean, I don't want to say dead beats, but like all we wanted to do was play music and we didn't want to work like jobs that weren't music related. And we didn't, you know, we wanted to be where it was happening. We didn't have any money. We didn't have anything. We were just like, we were going to go regardless. We had already had that plan. So the Kyle meeting was like, that was like, okay, well now we actually have somebody that we can, you know, look up when we get there. And then it was just, you got to LA. Did he have a band? Like, uh, cause you guys were the Ohio guys. Did he have his LA guys when you got there? Not really. There were some guys like here and there, but um, like, I think, I think Steve McDonald, the bass player who played on the first D record, I think he did like an early train wreck gig or two. Um, and I can't remember if there's anybody else. Um, but Kevin Wiseman, the drummer who was the, the, uh, the actor in Alias at that time, and he was a friend of Jaron Kyle's, he was the drummer from, I guess, the beginning. Uh, and so anyway, um, 
yeah, there wasn't an LA band for us to come in and like take the place of it. Didn't it was just, it was open, you know, were you working any other gigs before you ended up fully joining train wreck? No, I mean, we came to LA and we were like, should we call Kyle? We call Kyle. And then like, we gave him a call and he was like, how are you guys come out? We're going all, we're all going to do karaoke at this place called the brass monkey in West Hollywood or whatever. And we just all like went out, got drunk and did karaoke with Kyle. And then like a couple days later, it was like, you guys want to go on tour? And then like, we started doing stuff. So it was like, I still, to this day, it was like some of the most fun touring I've ever done. Cause it wasn't like, it wasn't real touring in the sense that like, there wasn't management, like there wasn't like a, there wasn't infrastructure and a team or anything like that. It was very ragtag, but it was Kyle. So it was like, there's people, you know, coming to the shows and it was really fun. And it was rowdy and it was like bar gigs and we were touring around in an RV. It was, it was super fun. And we were so young and had no idea what we were doing, except we were just there to have fun. Did you guys always like for all these tours, did you always bring those two women that were on the sides of the stages that were always dancing with you? Or is that, I saw that on Kimmel. I was like, do you always have them with you? Yeah, that was a one-off. I think they might've done one gig. Uh, But yeah, that was a, that was a special thing for Kimmel. I was going to say that's, that's, that's two extra mouths you got to feed on tour. Like that's dedication. That's dedication to the, to the, to the, the lore (laughs) of training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we weren't that dedicated to it. (laughs) So then it's what's two or three years from when you moved to LA, you joined Trainwreck, um, and then you end up working on the studio album for Pick a Destiny and end up doing the Pick a Destiny tour. How long after joining Trainwreck did that conversation about you possibly joining Tenacious D for that next album? How long was it the before first, that? Yeah, started? that first conversation was just, do you guys want to play on the record? And that was, I mean, that probably would have been in 05, and John and I landed in 03. So it was short, you know, shy of two years or so of, um, you know, we had no expectation of that. We had no, like John and I never like gunned for it or like anything like that. We, we always knew that there might be some possibility that we would do bigger things based on the fact that we were getting out and touring and playing and we were meeting people and, and everything. But, um, yeah, it was probably within that two years, we started hearing things about Pick a Destiny. You know, I, I think maybe I Kyle gave me a script or something too to like read. And, you know, was, uh, that kind of thing was happening. It was like, oh, this is really exciting. Like, this is cool. Again, no expectations of anything from it. Uh, but then, uh, and I don't even remember when or how, but yeah, they just asked us, do you guys want to play on the record? And we were like, Yes, definitely. <laughs> How well did you know like the HBO show and their first album before they asked you to join? Uh, to me, the HBO show was like this special thing that like, I felt like it was made for me. Like I was, you know, a teenager in my parents' bedroom on this little like 13 inch tiny TV and HBO would come on. I'd be staying up too late on a school night and it would be the HBO episodes. And it was the most amazing, hilarious thing I'd ever seen in my life. And I go to school the next day to like ask if my friends saw it and nobody knew what I was talking about. And I was like, crazy. It's like, no, there's like these two guys and they're like, it's hard to explain, but it's so funny. So like, that was very special to me. Like there only ended up being what, like three episodes, I think, think maybe, right? I I think there might've been six. Oh, okay. Um, And then the, the, their first record came out. It was... I remember because Kyle was later told me that 9-11 actually like held up. It was a weird sort of, it was around that time when everything obviously horrible. And like, so that came out in like uh, 2001, 2000, something like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, all that stuff was instrumental to me. Like, like this is the most amazing, like I love comedy and rock and roll, but done in a, in this special new way that I'd never seen really, you know? So when you joined, you already, you, you, you knew the vibe, you understand everything. There was no transition. It was just, I, Oh, I get it. I know this. I know the source. I know the lore. 
<laughs> I, know, I know where to go from yeah, here. I, uh, yeah, I was well versed in in their thing for sure. So then, after that three month tour for Pick a Destiny, was it just um, immediately like you guys are now your members of 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 the D? No, no, not. I mean, you know, it's sort of never been that, and it's and that's fine. It's like we we love it when it comes around. We love doing it. Um, you know, I, I remember at that point in time, that tour was amazing and it was huge because uh, it was like it was like a movie promo tour or something. Um, so I had never done anything of that size. Um, and I, you know, that was a difficult thing where I was like, oh, I guess this is my life now. But like, you know, like I was so green and like didn't know. And then it was done. And then that was it. And it was like, oh. I guess what am I, you know, like, like it took me a minute to kind of figure out like, oh yeah, this, even though this amazing thing is happening, it's not always going to be happening. 